I believe with everything within me that every believer wants to grow in their study of God's word. There's so many obstacles, however, that can present themselves that keep us from really studying like we should. There are time factors. And then sometimes there is just the lack of simplicity when it comes to reading or even being taught the Word of God. That's why I created a platform called Clear Studies. What is Clear Studies? Clear Studies is a platform where you are a part of an e-class and each week I send you a link to a 15-minute podcast and a 15-minute video. That way, whether you're auditory or visual learner, you're covered on both ends. The podcast is something that you can download to your device and listen to it when you get ready, when you have time to do so. It may be midnight, it may be three in the morning, it may be during your lunch break. But to accompany the teaching, each week you also will get a colorful PDF handout that is virtually a transcript of the teaching. So you won't miss a single word that I have said in the video or in the podcast. But beyond that, it comes with discussion questions that are simple yet provocative that will enable you to think your way through that passage and apply it to your everyday life. It's something that you can share with your family, with your friends. You can even create your own discussion group about each week's lesson. I want you to be a part of my e-class. I want you to grow in the study of God's word. I don't want you to miss out on what God is doing and on this divine opportunity to grow, to study, and to learn with others. There'll never be an embarrassing moment where you're asking a question in front of the group or where you put on the spot. It's just like, it's just me talking to you and then God talking to you while you're studying on your own. If there's ever a question, you can always email me. Why don't you join right now? Clearstudies at gmail.com. Just send an email and say, sign me up and we will add you to the E-Class and you can join scores of other people around the nation who are being blessed by these brief but impactful teachings. Hey everybody, welcome to TNT Tuesday Night Teaching. Here's a little throwback for your soul.
Hey family, welcome to TNT. It's Tuesday night teaching with Bishop Littman. I'm so glad to have you here. Make sure you hit that like button, share, subscribe, and make sure you're in the comments. Hey, I want to talk to you on this episode from the subject is time to get your feet wet. Come on, somebody type that in real quick. Time to get your feet wet. I want to based this on a very familiar passage of scripture that is found in Matthew chapter number 14, verse number 22 through 33. And welcome, everybody. Come on in. So glad to have you with us. I'm glad you're here for TNT Tuesday night teaching. We're in Matthew 14, verse 22 through 33 in the King James Version. And it reads like this. And straightway, Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him unto the other side while he sent the multitudes away. And when he sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. Verse 24 says, but the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, it is a spirit or a ghost. And they cried out for fear. But straightway, Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, or in other words, if in fact, Lord, this is you, allow me to come to you on the water. And he, that's Jesus, said, Come. And when Peter was come out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind was boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said to him, O thou of little faith, why did you doubt? Wherefore? didst thy doubt. And when they were come into the ship, the wind ceased. Then they that were in the ship came and worshiped him. That's Jesus. Saying of a truth, thou art the son of God. Hey, in TNT this week, I want to share with you from this thought, and I want you to put it in the comments right now. And I want to talk to you and add this hashtag to your social media. Our subject for tonight is it's time to get your feet wet. It's time to get your feet wet. For three and a half years, Jesus had been mentoring his disciples. Imagine having Jesus as your personal life coach every day for three and a half years. Sometimes Jesus would sit, but he wanted to teach them. He would give all kinds of object lessons and he would sit with them, giving them personal one-on-one -on -one attention. He wanted to teach his disciples a life of poise, a life of peace, a life of power, and a life of praise. And he sought to teach them how to carry out his mission on a daily basis. The text teaches us a lesson in a crisis, how they could stay calm in a crisis. And is there anybody on this live right now that needs to know how to stay calm in a crisis? <laughs> he wanted to teach them how they could walk above their circumstances and win in the face of the wind. And it happened after the feeding of the 5,000. If you remember the story of the feeding of the 5,000, after Jesus fed all of those people, they wanted to inaugurate him as an earthly king. They wanted to create a kingdom. And Jesus 
saw what would happen, so he commands quickly that his disciples would get on the boat and remove them from that situation. It sort of reminds us of the church because the great challenge of the church is to have contact with the world without becoming contaminated by the world. We are to infiltrate and influence without being infected. We are to teach without being tarnished. We are to be voices and not to be echoes. We are to be headlights and not taillights. We are to be originals and not copies. We are to be leaders and not followers. Jesus commands them, get on the boat. Then he dismisses the crowd. Now, the last time they were in a storm, Jesus was with them. But this time he sends them on this boat alone because he wanted to teach them how to trust him when they can't see him. And while they're on the boat, the Bible says that Jesus goes apart to pray. He's alone in prayer. And it was because of this time that he's been on his knees that he has so much power when he was on his feet. Time on your knees will give you power on your feet. Jesus had sense enough to know that there is no such thing as being too busy to pray. And I'm talking to somebody who's watching me right now. Your schedule is too full. If you're too busy to pray and spend time with God, your schedule is too full. Jesus is praying and the disciples are in the grips of a sudden storm. The Sea of Galilee was shaped like a bowl between mountains. And so when the wind would come from the top of the mountains and scoop down on the sea, it would create sudden storms. Yet Jesus stands atop of a mountain while in prayer and can see down in the valley of their despair. And the implication is that he's watching over them and watching to see how they will handle the storm. The Bible says he won't put more on you than you could bear. Do you believe that? Type amen. That tells you how long he'll watch you before he comes. He will watch you until you get to the end of your ability to handle it. Then he'll step in. So if he hasn't stepped in, it's because he knows you can handle it right now. That's the power of Christ at work in our lives. I came to tell you, though, that if you're in a place of despair in your life, fear not. Here he comes. <laughs> that's what he did for his disciples. And that's what he'll do for you as his disciple. And notice how he came to them walking on the water. Oh, what the fellows are struggling with. Jesus has it under his feet. Isn't that something to shout about on a Tuesday night? The disciples look through the mist and the fog. They look through the leaping waves and they look through this rocking boat situation and they see this figure and here comes help, but they see him as harm. They're looking through the lenses of fear rather than through the lenses of faith. And when they see this figure, they began to cry out in fear like six-year-old girls. Ah, it's a ghost. <laughs> Has the Lord ever surprised you through what you thought was sent to harm you only for you to later on realize in a place of maturity that it was sent to help you? Listen, Jesus is coming. And Jesus said to them, as he says to us now, it is I be not afraid. They said it's a ghost. Jesus said, whatever you need, I am. And right now you need peace. You need comfort. You need tranquility. That I am. Peter identifies Jesus and he says, if that is you, allow me to come where you are on the water. Jesus makes one word utter off of his lips. Come. And Peter gets out of the boat and starts walking on that water. Peter hears the wind howling and hears the waves and sees the water moving to get his feet, but he keeps his eyes on Jesus and stays above the situation. But here's where the enemy catches us is after a while. 
because after a while, he took his eyes off of Jesus to where he was headed and started paying attention to the wind and the howling, whistling of the waves and the wind dashing up against each other. And the moment he took his eyes off Jesus, Peter begins to sink. Now, we have to give Peter credit. He did walk. The only difference between Peter and other people is that Peter was willing to get out of the boat. But sometimes we're not willing to take a step of faith. Look, God wants to do some great things in your life, even in 2021. And it may be that the only thing standing in between you and what God has for you is you getting out of the boat. It's time to get your feet wet. But number one, you got to be willing to step out into something you've never seen. One of the reasons that God cannot do more in our lives is because we're so busy trying to be like other people instead of like Jesus. Peter said, if it's you, let me do what you're doing. His emphasis was on Jesus over there, not the other disciples right here. Take your eyes off of people. Stop letting people's experience be the extent of your limitations. The Bible says that eyes have not seen, ears haven't heard what the Lord has in store. But listen, if you want to get what eyes haven't seen, you've got to be willing to do something you've never seen. Got to be willing to step out of that boat, step out into faith and get your feet wet. Number two. You've got to be set free from what others have to say. <laughs> Peter said, Lord, if it's you, permit me to come to you on the water. Now, the Bible is silent right here as to what the other 11 in the boat had to say. But if they're anything like your cousins, you know, Ray Ray Pookie, Shanika Quez and all of them, they had something to say like, Peter, there you go again, man. You always trying to do stuff nobody's done before. Man, you're going to drown. You're going to get out there and sink. Look at Peter. That fool think he can do it. Look at him. He's got the nerve to try to be like Jesus. Friends, don't let other people's limitation be your limitation. Can't you hear them? always trying to do something like Jesus. That ought to be the words that <laughs> your people that know you, your family, and even your haters speak about you, that they're always trying to be like Jesus. Get your feet wet. There might be somebody watching me today. The reason that your life is so boring is because you're so busy trying to please people who have never had a wet foot in their lives. Their foot is as dry and cracked and ashy as it can be, all because they are not trying to be like Jesus. And people with that mentality will try to keep you from stepping out in faith and being like Jesus. It is impossible to follow Jesus and never get your feet wet. Don't be so caught up in cliques, in clubs, and in groups that you miss a God moment for your life. Don't let people keep you from getting to Jesus. People want you to stay in the boat of familiarity, of comfort. Never take a risk. Never start a business. Never go back to school. Never finish your college education. But have you ever thought about the fact that maybe the reason God wants to get you out of the boat is because if you get out of the boat, the folk who secretly want to be like you will also get out of the boat. Hey, don't you die with dry, cracked, and ashy feet. You need something better than Lubiderm, something better than Vaseline. You need to step your foot in the water and get out of the boat. Here's number three. You've got to step away from self-centered support. Self-centered support. Now, the boat that they were in that was keeping them afloat up to that point was a boat made by man's hands. In order for Peter to walk on the water, he had to step away from the security that was made by the hands of men. And there's nothing wrong with a good job. I pray that God gives everybody a great job, a great career. 
your own business on the side, real estate investments and all of that. God wants you to do well and to prosper. Everybody needs a 401k. Everybody needs to build up their social security. But those things are man-made boats. There's nothing wrong with that boat. That's the conventional way to stay afloat. But don't get it twisted. The boat is not your source. It's just your resource. And there are 13 men in this story. 11 of them are staying afloat by what man has made. But two of them are staying afloat by the power of God. And I want to ask you a question. When do you know when it's time to stay and time to step? Well, if you want to know when it's time to stay or time to step, here it is. Ask this question, Lord, is it you? Before you move, <laughs> you better say, Lord, is it you? Before you make a major step in your life, always ask, Lord, is this you? Before you say I do and walk down the aisle, what appears to be Miss or Mr. Right, you better say, Lord, is it you? Because if you don't, you might discover it's Miss or Miss Right now and not Mr. Right Peter says, Lord, if it's you, let me come to you on the water. And Jesus, in one solemn word, come, empowers Peter to walk on top of his trouble. Sometimes we stay in the boat so long that we begin to think that the boat is our source of security. But can I tell you how I think it happened? I think that when Peter stepped out, I mean, what did he step on? You think he stepped out on the water, but he didn't step out on the water. He stepped out on the word. Look how powerful Jesus's word is, family. All Peter needed was just one word from the Lord. Come. And when Peter got that one word from the Lord and Peter stepped out in bold faith, the water heard the word from its master creator. And when the water heard the word, the H2 and O saluted the word of his maker, said, attention, and still at attention, solidified. Jesus made a sidewalk in the sea just for Peter to walk on top of to get to him. I've come to tell you that if you keep your eyes on Jesus in this season in your life, he'll create sidewalks in the sea. He'll make ways out of somebody ought to be saying amen in the comments. Where y'all at? God will make ways out of no ways in your life if you keep your eyes on him. But as long as your ears and eyes are on the same folk in the same boat that you've been rowing with and going nowhere all these years, you will remain and maintain where you are. But if you dare to trust God in faith and get your feet wet and step out and do whatever he empowers and equips and emboldens you to do, you'll have a testimony like no other. Now, we know that Peter got sidetracked. And I mentioned a minute a minute ago that that's how the enemy gets us is with duration. Anybody can have faith for five seconds. But when five seconds turns into five minutes, five minutes turns into five days, five days turns into five weeks, or even let's look at where we are right now. Coronavirus pandemic turns into 12 months to now going into over a year. It's easy for us to lose faith. It's easy for us to say there's no reason to step out. It's easy for us to say there's no reason to believe God for anything new in our lives. But the devil, his grandma and his first cousin are liars. God has more in store for you. Don't you dare miss this opportunity to step out in bold faith and do what he's called and told you to do. He's already equipped you and he's made the way for you. All you've got to do is step out on it. Peter took his eyes off Jesus. He began to sink and he then prays a three word prayer. That's all it takes. Lord, save me. You don't have to go into merciful Father, everlasting God. It's once more and again for you, your children come knee bent, body bowed, like a good, uh, good parent with bad children. Uh, you ain't got to do all that. Lord, save me. Lord, help me. Matter of fact, all he really had to do was say, help. And the Lord would have still saved him.
He's by your side and he's going to take care of you. Reach out to him and he'll reach out to you. The Bible says they both got back in the boat. Now, Jesus didn't pick him up, scoop him up and carry him to the boat. But by holding the hand of the master, he was able to do what he failed doing on his own. He walked on the water the first time on his own. He failed the first time because he took matters into his own sight and his own perception. But he succeeded the second time walking on the water to the boat because he held the hand of the master of earth, sea, and the land. Hey, make sure you got a good grip with his hand in your hand and let him hold you up and he'll lift you up and he'll pick you up. I pray that something inspired you. This is TNT Tuesday night teaching. Want to see you in the comments? Let me know if you were blessed by this teaching tonight. Make sure you share it, like it, send it to your cousin in DC, in South Carolina, in Virginia, in Macon, Georgia, wherever they may be. This is TNT with Bishop Littman. I'm so happy that you joined us. Make sure you join us on YouTube live every Sunday morning, 930 New Mountain Top Baptist Church, the greatest church anywhere in the whole wide world. Do you hear me when I say, hey, the grace of God be with you. Peace. I love you so much. May the Lord keep you. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next week.